Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and one of my favorite things about Comic-Con is that movie studios, TV studios, let fans get up close and personal with some of the props and costumes and even filming miniatures that are used to make some of their favorite shows. That's great news for fans of Fox's The Orville. That's the science fiction show run by Seth MacFarlane because here at their Orville experience, they've brought tons of costumes and props and yes, even the filming miniature of The Orville itself here for us to get a close look at. We're gonna get close with all these costumes, chat with some of the producers on the show, and take a look and see what the Orville's all about. So I'm joined now by John Kasser, the EP and director of some of the episodes yes, on the Orville. Yes. How are you doing, John? I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm really good now because I've just walked into this place and it's it's kind of like my job. This is what I do. I check the costumes, I check the concept art, I check the storyboards, the visual effects. So it's all here for people to see. It's fantastic. It's like the world building that you do on the show, exactly. but against the exactly. walls for the fans yeah. to and see. And you're seeing the final products. And some of them actually you're seeing some concept. The art is really interesting because you'll be able to look at the art and go, oh, look, it started like that, but then it'll look different in the show. So you'll see the progression. So the progression is something I want to talk about. The Orville, sure. you know, Seth is a well-known science fiction fan. Yes, he he loves like a certain era of science yes. fiction. Is that yes. what you guys were going for in yes. the design of the look and I feel mean, of the show? I came in I came in the first year and only did one episode. And I was brought in by Brandon Braga, who is not only a, a producer and writer on Star Trek, but also on 24. Mm. And that's where we met. And he said, look, we're looking for directors. And, and I said, well, isn't it a comedy? I heard it's a comedy. He said, well, it's not really. And, and we want drama directors. We don't want comedy guys. I'm like, OK, well, that's what I do. So I, I came in for an interview, uh, hit it off with everybody. And they hired me to do the one episode. And then I came in. I remember doing that episode and thinking, there's, some, there's a lot of funny stuff in here. But then the ending was so serious. I thought, wow, tonally, there's nothing like this. This is really its own, its own thing. And so, and I, I really thought this is either going to be a hit or it's going to be a, a massive failure because it's taking such a chance. And of course, it did become a hit because what it did do really well is what Star Trek did at the beginning. It told it told those human stories, it told those social issues stories, which are really important. And then still had the space and the action and the and the and the space battles and the new planets and the aliens and all of that. But then wrapped up in the in this kind of bit of a comedy. So it was just a really tonally interesting thing. And you guys are unafraid of making that connection because there aren't a lot of shows doing that this no. day. With the bright interiors, right. it really feels right. like that the comfort that I, I exactly, remember exactly of, right. of watching yeah. Next Generation in DS9. You know, that's interesting that you use that because that's what Seth uses all the time. He said, I want the ship to be comfortable. He also has a theory. And that theory is if you're on that ship for like two years of your life, it's kind of going to look like a cruise ship because it's going to be comfortable for you. You know, you don't want to be walking down dark hallways. You want to be walking down hallways that make you happy. And I think that's part of it, the part of what he loved about the original Star Trek. It had that feel to it, that it was a comfortable place. And he uses that word all the time. We want the audience to be comfortable to come onto our ship. And so, yes, and I mean, look, we've, we've turned the ship dark sometimes when other aliens take it and whatever happens, but it's all story related. But he really, he really feels like that it should be a comfortable space, not only to watch, but to live it for the, for the people that are on the ship. And the sandbox of being a science fiction show allows you to do all sorts of interesting things Absolutely. with the fancy, the yeah. creatures that yeah. can be created, yeah. that can be effects, there's yeah. wonderful jobs with the makeup, Incredible. the prop design. Yeah. It's a lot, must be a fun place to work. Well, it is and challenging. The, the, you know, the advantage we have, which again, I give to Seth and his writers, is that we get all the episodes before the season even starts. Mm. So something like Identity Part Two, with that massive space battle, we started working on that the second we came into work on, on the, the first episode, even though that was episode nine, because we knew that it was gonna take forever to do that because it's such a massive space battle. So so we have the advantage to, to get ahead on, on things, knowing we have a new planet coming up. What's it gonna look like? What are they gonna wear? What <laughs> This is funny, but what the chairs are gonna look like are always a deal because it, you've gotta figure out 
what fits that planet and how it's different than Earth, uh, or how it's the same as Earth, one or the other. So we get the scripts way ahead of time, so we get to do that, which is really a benefit for us. Otherwise, we couldn't do this show. Because th as you could see in the work, this is not work you do in seven days of prep. No. This is work that you do in months leading up to the show. And now the having two seasons under your belt, developing the third season, the relationships, are more cemented. There's history there. Yeah, absolutely. And as a director, as a storyteller, what does that allow you to do with the, the characters? Well, it, it's actually right from the writing stage right away. Look, what they've done on the show, again, which is, you know, Seth going back to, to Star Trek, is that they keep touching back on, on different episodes. What he did with Identity was just brilliant. The fact that Isaac, who we learned to love, became our mortal enemy and, and had a whole planet filled with other Isaacs that became the biggest enemy that you know, the, that the human race is like being challenged on our show was just brilliant and, and no one saw that coming. And so that's the kind of things that you'll, I'll guarantee you they'll have, even though I haven't seen a script yet, I know for a fact that they'll he'll keep touching back to the way we touch back to the krill, the way we touch back to the woman that was a krill and we brought her back. Like they'll keep doing that because that's what keeps the world alive. You know, you're seeing people you've seen before and, and stories you've seen before and you keep going back to them, makes it really entertaining for the audience. Are you seeing it? in the fan base as well, the growing fan base and people oh, cosplaying and doing makeup. Absolutely. I mean, I can't wait this year because last year we were, you know, we only had the one season under our belt. Second season we hadn't started yet. And there were just a handful of people. I think there's going to probably be a little more this year. You know, and so that's exciting for us. And, and we love our fan base. They, they connect with us. We love connecting back with them. I think everybody on the show is constantly giving giving on social. And, and I think we've got a new fan base. I think we've had our hardcore base from the beginning. But I think after Identity, I think a lot of people that were sitting on the fence jumped over the fence and now they're, they're with us and part of our fan base. And that's exciting to us because we, we, we love that episode and we knew that episode was going to be a turning point for us. So great to see all that passion and labor of love being rewarded with confidence from the network and the studio. Yeah, and to see it here. It's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you and, and enjoy. Thank you.